X-ray vision brings new life to a fossil flattened by time. Scientists were able to unlock the identity of an ichthyosaur that had been reduced to a two-dimension jumble of bones. While exploring an Arctic mountain top in 2008, paleontologists unearthed a small skeleton that resembled a coiled sea serpent imprinted into a slab of 240 million year old rock. The remarkably complete skeleton, nicknamed Oda, was deposited in the collection of the University of Oslo's Natural History Museum. It was clear that Oda was an ichthyosaur, but no one could say if it was a known species of the marine reptiles, which were like a mashup of a crocodile and a dolphin. While most of its skeleton remained, eons under a muddy sea floor had squeezed Oda into a two-dimensional jumble of bones. To identify the reptile, paleontologists stuck the perplexing patient under an X-ray machine to piece together the petrified puzzle. In a paper published Wednesday in the journal Pilo S1, the researchers described the anatomical details they had gleaned from the ghostly glow of Oda's X-rayed bones. The contrast of these bones are bright as day, said Neil Kelly, a paleontologist at Vanderbilt University who studies marine reptiles and was not involved in the new study. I'm very jealous that's exactly the result that you want when you put something in an X-ray. The findings, he added, show the potential of the technique to add new dimensions to mysteries in the fossil record that have been flattened by the passage of time. The enigmatic skeleton was discovered on a windswept plateau on Ejoya Island in Svalbard, an Arctic archipelago north of Norway that's home to reindeer and polar bears. But during the Middle Triassic period, the area was a deep sea shelf off the northern coast of the supercontinent Pangaea and a haven for marine reptiles. Victoria Schoholt Engelschian, a doctoral researcher at the Natural History Museum in Oslo, came across bits of bluish ichthyosaur bones when she was making computed tomography scans of clumps of fossilized clams from the area. A colleague recommended scanning Oda for identifying clues. For more than a century, paleontologists had to break open fossils to analyze internal anatomy, often destroying their prized specimens. In recent decades, scientists have turned toward non-destructive techniques like CT scanning to create three-dimensional renderings of fossils. Because Oda's bones were stamped into the rock, Ms. Engelschian and her colleagues opted to go for a more traditional approach by shooting X-rays through the fossil to render two-dimensional images. Fitting Oda, which is preserved with its spine curled, its tail bent and its flipper and rib bones strewn about, into an X-ray machine proved daunting. We do not have any machine that can make radiographs of large specimens but luckily our colleagues at the Cultural History Museum did, as archaeologists use this technique much more often Ms. Engelschian said. In the initial scans, Oda's fossilized bones leapt off the X-rays. This contrast was a result in part of the fact that the material inside the animal's bones had been entirely replaced by barite, a sulfate mineral that is used today as a radiographic contrast agent for medical exams. The ichthyosaur's bones were no longer bones, which caused them to light up Ms. Engelschian said. Because the barite gave the ichthyosaur's bones a bright glow, the team was able to observe anatomical features that had been overlooked or obscured. They discovered that the animal's alligator-like skull was considerably longer than previously thought. They also pinpointed previously invisible limb bones and vertebrae. This study illustrates the importance of using some of the more tried and tested techniques that may still reveal new data said Dean Lomax, a paleontologist at the University of Manchester in England who specializes in ichthyosaurs and was not involved in the new study. The crucial clue was in the creature's teeth. The x-rays revealed that Oda's larger teeth had grooves in them that were reminiscent of teeth found in the jaws of Phalarodon atavus, a small and sleek ichthyosaur that has been found in mainland Europe and China. According to Ms. Engelschian, finding this ichthyosaur in Svalbard sheds light on how widespread and successful the species was during its heyday. Dr. Kelly added that finding Oda's rightful place in the fossil record helped add context to the rise of ichthyosaurs, which would dominate marine ecosystems for 150 million years. He said he thought that re-examining other marine reptile fossils under X-rays might reveal hidden clues to how these reptiles evolved.
exceptional X-ray contrast, radiography imaging of a middle triassic mixosaurid from Svalbard. The black shales of the middle triassic Botnia formation in Svalbard are known for their fossil richness with abundant ichthyosaur remains and beds of the bivalve Daonella. Vertebrate remains from the Muin Mountain on Edgia are shown to have exceptional X-ray contrast due to a combination of sulfide and sulfate permineralization and pseudomorphing. Radiography imaging of a previously described specimen, PMO 219.250, revealed new and spectacular details such as more carpals, teeth, and skull sutures. Teeth and skull characters are taxonomically significant, supporting the referral of PMO 219.250 to Phalarodon and further suggesting an affinity to P. atavis. Three sulfur phases were identified, with the sulfide sphalerite ZNS being the highest temperature phase, followed by the sulfate barite, BASO4, and the sulfide pyrite, FAS2. Sulfate permineralization is also seen in specimens from the Upper Jurassic on Svalbard. We suggest that sulfur-rich fluids have flowed and dissolved barium from the shales and deposited the sphalerite and barite, and that this could be linked to the Cretaceous halop. The Jurassic specimens are only permineralized by barite, while the Triassic specimens have also been permineralized, but mainly pseudomorphet by barite with crystals of sphalerite. Lithology differences appear to have controlled the compaction of the Triassic specimens, while the Jurassic specimens have retained their three-dimensional shape due to the barite emplacement relatively earlier in their depositional history. Although soft tissues are not preserved, the excellent X-ray contrast in the middle Triassic specimens is reminiscent of pyritized fossil sites such as the Hunter C.K. Slate, Devonian, Beecher's Trilobite Bed, or Davishan, and the L.A. Valtzer R.H. Neemarl's Jurassic Introduction. Paleontological sites with exceptionally preserved, conservate, or particularly abundant, concentrate, fossils are known as Lagerston. These sites are invaluable windows to the past, providing comprehensive views of biodiversity and ecosystems contrasting the usually scattered paleontological record. Some of the Siasical fossil Lagerston are particularly well suited to X-ray investigations. Of particular fame in this respect are the Devonian Hunter CK shale in Germany. The Ordovician Beecher's Trilobite Bed in New York State and the Jurassic L.A. Valtzer R.H. Nee Lagerst in southwest France. In these cases, X-ray contrast is caused by the pyrotization of the fossils with the high atomic weight of Fe in the iron sulfide giving strong X-ray attenuation. Here we report on unique fossil preservation from the blank Newton member of the Botnia Formation, Middle Triassic, Ladinian, on the Muin Mountain on Edgia, Svalbard. In these beds, numerous vertebrate fossils are pervasively permineralized by mainly barite, which has high atomic weight and extremely high X-ray attenuation. It should be noted that this unique preservation is present in the majority of specimens from the Upper Botnia Formation from multiple localities. In recent years, the study of fossils has been transformed by the application of X-ray technologies, especially X-ray computed tomography and synchrotron tomography. Although simple radiography is commonly used on invertebrates, see Hohenstein for a short review of the early history of X-rays in paleontology, it is rarely used on vertebrates where computed tomography or synchrotron tomography is normally utilized. These imaging techniques require a density contrast between the fossil and the matrix, such as with pyrotized fossils, calcite fossils in shales, and subfossil remains with air in internal cavities. Remineralization of fossils can follow several modes of formation. Most common among vertebrates is perhaps authogenic preservation, e.g. pseudomorphs and duripartic hard part preservation, e. skeletal material. Different modes of substitution include permineralization, where the original bone is replaced, poor infilling, where the bone trabecule are infilled with a secondary mineral and pseudomorphing a partial to complete dissolution of a phosphatic phase and subsequent recrystallization, such that an unrelated mineral takes the form of the fossil. 
the mineral component of bones, hydroxyapatite, cotton PO4602, can be recrystallized early during diagenesis and some workers even suggest that most apatitic fossils are pseudomorphs. Common replacing minerals that are observed here are fluorapatite, Ka5 PO43F, sphalerite, ZNS, barite, BASO4, and in some instances pyrite, FAS2, although this most often is seen as diagenetic mineral growth rather than bone replacement. The focus specimen of this study, PMO 219.250, FIGS 2 and 3, is a mixosaurid ichthyosaur from the middle Triassic Botnia formation of Svalbard. Mixosaurid is a family of small-bodied ichthyosaurs found in Middle Triassic marine deposits from Svalbard, Italy, Germany, China, Switzerland and North America. The two genera of Mixosaurids are differentiated largely based off differences in dentition. Phalarodon sports an ankylosed thecodont and usually heterodont.